One, two, one, two, three, four. Hey everybody, uh, you're welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna be showing you quickly how to make your band sound tighter and when you're starting your song how to start together on the intro. So if you are a kind of band that uses multi-tracks or you use stems or you use loop to start your song and you want to make sure everybody's starting the intro at the same time or you or you just want to make sure everybody is on point this is the right video for you and i'm going to be as fast as i can so if you if i was too fast for you you can just pause the video or take it back a little bit because i want to make this video very very short so let's get right into it ASAP. So the two things that you need to get, apart from your loop, which you obviously need or your backing track, you need your metronome and you also need your cues and guide. Now, this cues and guide that I'm talking about, you can get it from the multi-track, multitracks.com. I'm going to be putting the links below. I'm not sponsored by them. I just found their free package very useful. So you can download their pack, it's going, it has everything you need, you know, for, for guides for the band in there. And then of course you need a metronome. You can use the same one that comes from your ABT in life. So how do you do that? Let me show you that quickly. So you want to go into your applications folder. If you go into your applications folder right here and you right click on your ABT, uh, you say show package contents. You go to contents, you want to go into app resources, miscellaneous, uh, metronome samples. And you have the two samples, the metronome samples right here. One sounds like this. And the other one. Yeah. So those are the two samples. And you want to take them, you want to put them anywhere you like. I have put mine in this untitled folder right in my desktop and I name it metronome. So they are right here. I just dragged, I just saved them here again. So I'll come to my, back to my Hibbertin and I'll here add folder. If you don't have this set up already, so you can add a folder. So now from your desktop and from the untitled folder, you see right here, you say open. And uh, if you say open, you should see this guy right here. And then you want to also, when you download uh, the cues and guide that I just shared the link below, you want to do the same thing, just like what you did for metronome, save it where you can see it. My own is saved on my hard drive and I have it right here as click and guide, just the same name that it comes with. Uh, so how do we use this? Now, two things, let us create two MIDI tracks quickly two MIDI tracks and we're going to use what we call the drum rack. So if you look for the drum rack, put one drum rack here, put another drum rack here. Let's name this one the click or the metronome, right? We name as the metronome. Metronome. And the other one is going to be our cues slash guide, whatever you want to call it. So now let me give you an example of what i was telling you about like if you always have to start your loop and your loop is already playing before you ever get to start the song so every day every time you're performing your loop is always having to start first it can be really annoying i'm going to give you an extra example of what that sounds like let's say let's take this as an example we drop it here and it start and then you you now have to start the song with your band but every time it's always the loop why we don't have to do that there is a better way to do it and that's what i'm showing you today so now that we have this created we want to come to our metronome right here and we want to do what we want to click on this guy on our drum rack and we want to put the metronome here so we have metronome here and we have another one here so, but I want my upper one to come first before the other one. So it's like the upper and the lower. So you get what I'm saying. And then my cues, I'll come here 
going to English guide. One, two, three, four. Okay, we have all of those. What do we do? We drag them here on my drum rack instead. So I have one, two, three, four. Okay, I'm good to go. So what else do we need to do? Let's insert a MIDI clip right here. This is already inserted. Let's say click and here uh, we have the cue, right? Okay, so on my click, I want to have So I have my one, two, three, four here. I also want to do the same thing. Okay. So this is my one, two, two three, three, four, and a four. Okay. So what I want to do is make sure I have at least two bars before the loop start. Okay. This is my loop, the whole deal loop, right? I so said, this is my loop. That's my loop, but I want two bars before the loop start. Okay, uh, what do I do? I say go to my MIDI track and uh, duplicate. Come here, do the same thing, duplicate. But in my cubes, I want something like one, two, one, two, three, four, right? So what do I do? I take this two, one here, take it out. Three, three, two. And put it on two and take four. the four, take it out. So I have one, two, one, two, three, four. And my click is still gonna be the same thing, right? My click is still one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So if I mute this one right here, if I mute this one, I have uh, one, two, one, two, three, four. All right, but my loop is still playing. I wanna make sure that is not playing. First, number one method to use is to use what we called uh, you slice to a new MIDI track, you slice the audio, right? So if you slice that, transient, built-in, say okay, it's gonna slice everything, okay, into different grids. Uh, so if we mute this again and we play this back, you hear the loop played perfectly well. Not bad, not bad. All right. Now, what I want to do with this method is when you have this, you can now do what? Duplicate this loop. And now take this first two bars, delete it. When you delete that and you want to set your loop to start from number three. So you get your loop to start from number three, your looping point. The entire thing is starting from one, but it's gonna only loop three to five. Okay, so you have this. So now, for the first two bar is empty and you have three to five, working perfectly fine. And then if I unmute these other sections, uh, my cue and my click, you have what we're looking for. One, one. two. One, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one. All right, now my cue, I don't want it to keep on doing one, two, one, two, so I want, I take it out of the loop mode. So I have one, two, one, two, three, four. And I don't have to hear that again anymore. Right, now the challenge I have with this method is that as easy as it is, if I have up to 10 loops that I need to use for my set list, this is another loop right here. So this is a worship loop, I think. Let's try this. This is 126, okay. It's launch number 1 to 6. 1, 2. Okay, uh, delete this guy. Okay, and slice this. Okay, now we have this right here and uh, one, two. Okay, another problem. So something is wrong when I put one. it in. Uh, so uh, this should be what 120. 
126. One, one. Tissue wall. One, two. All right. So now that we have that, now let's slice this. Say okay. I don't need this. One, two. All right. It's working perfectly. Now you see what is happening is it's creating a new MIDI file for this for this when every, every time I'm slicing them and uh, it's creating a new you know sampling instrument a sampling track here I don't want that to happen because I'm gonna be having ten of these and it just keeps going uh, it's just gonna be a lot of mess so the other method we can use to simplify this is to just keep everything in audio right and keep it on the same place so I'm gonna remove this uh, I'm gonna remove this as well so for this one like I said I have just one bar here oh but I need at least two bar of silence look at this loop right here it's just one bar one but I need at least two bar of silence and another two bar to loop so what do I do I can copy this clip uh, create a new audio track here and go to this other view here uh, Paste my track here, okay uh, Let's zoom in if I paste my track here. I have just one bar. I want to make it at least four bar Then duplicate three times. So when I duplicate three times I have my four bar and I can consoli consolidate everything using Ctrl G, Command J in Apple. Command J. Now I have consolidated this file. Uh, it's now from 19 to what? I want to make sure it's, sure it's on 19 to 13. Then copy this file. Okay. Uh, copy that and uh, remove this okay paste the new one inside you see it's now four bar from bar one to bar five so what i want to do with this really really easy turn on my envelope right here uh, if i turn on my envelope and i go there are two modes here that i can control my volume from the clip and the mixer the clip is this one and the mixer is this one here okay so let's turn this back on uh, let's turn this on now I'll go to my clip I've prepared the clip then the mixer the mixer is controlling everything here on this channel but I want to just control this audio file only so uh, what I wanted to do is mute from bar 1 to bar 3 or put the volume to the lowest possible volume right from bar one to bar three i want to make sure that is muted so i can zoom in to make sure i am right on point right right on point okay so we have this uh what do we do next make sure i'm in loop turn on my loop and i also make sure now I want to make sure that I'm starting my loop from one, of course, to this point. But instead, I want to make my loop to be between three and four instead of one. I mean, my three and five, by three and by five. So now I have my loop position there. So if I play this, I should hear my click, I should hear my cue for the first tuba without the loop and then the loop comes in and the loop keeps going and the metronome of course so let's go One, two. okay no it's not happening so something is wrong somewhere this audio file i believe so let's take this out One. okay it's still now working so where do we have it wrong um Okay, uh, we have it wrong here. My start should be from here. <laughs> and then, so I want to make sure my start is from here and my looping point is from here. So, 
Now we should have this playing but no sound and I play the key when I play the click and they work perfectly. Let's go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Easy. And that's, that is what you need to do to make sure everybody comes in at the right time and without always having to play that click track every time. One final thing that I want to show you is that when you have your loop finally set up rightly, you want to make sure your cue and your metronome is not going out on the same channel where your loop is also going on because everybody's just going to hear what you're doing. So you want to make your metronome and your cues go out on a, a separate channel. So I have an audio interface that I use that has uh, four output. So so I have like two different stereo outputs. I have output one and two and I have output three and four. So how I do that is I take my I can take my metronome on output three, my cues on output four, my loops is in stereo mode output one and two, which is on my master, right? But on here I can change that and configure it. So for the purpose of the tutorial and my screen record, I'm using this output but Watch what I do now if I switch this. You're not going to hear me, but you can see my mouse moving. I'm going to change this back to my audio interface and I'll show you how you can do that. And you can change it back to, uh, you can change it back to three and four. All right. So if you have the audio interface that gives you that room, excess room to, to have more output. All right, so I believe you could see what happened there. So now your hotspot three and four, you ex I expect to know what to do with that. You can send this to your mixing desk and send this back to your in here system where you can, you have control over these output three and four separately, your cues on another channel and your metronome or your click itself on another channel so that you are not having issues and everybody can hear the click, the cues and the loop on different channels easily, no issues. All right, so so the same approach goes for if you want to start with uh, a, a, a backing track, you just need to find the first tuba, mute it, uh, and then you do what? You let the music start from bar three. And you're good to go everybody will be on point so if you like this video please make sure you like it it's gonna help the channel a lot and if you want to keep seeing more of these videos please click the subscribe button and the bell to make sure you're notified every time i put up a video like this or any kind of music related video your support will mean so much to me thank you so much for checking this video out i'll see you on the next video peace one, two, one, two, three, four.